Hey friends, Ash here with Ginsense. How's it going? Hope you're doing really well. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a clone fragrance of one of my favorite scents of all time, Green Irish Tweed by Creed. The fragrance is Haramain Amber Oud Carbon Edition. As always, I'm gonna show you guys the presentation of the fragrance, break this one down, let you know how it stacks up with Green Irish Tweed, let you know if it's worth checking out, and also let you know, is it better than other alternatives on the market? So let's jump into it. First off, really quickly, let's knock out that presentation. Here you got the box. You have the name of the house, name of the fragrance on the front there. And it's a bit different than your typical presentation because this is a clamshell. So it opens up like so, and then your bottle sits down inside the little foam cutout. On the back is where you're gonna find the ingredients and the batch code. And it also has kind of a, a slightly sharp feeling around the edges. Not that you're ever gonna cut your finger on it or anything, just when you hold it, it feels a little sharp in the hand along the bottom. So on the box, I'm kind of split. I mean, it's trying to look more luxurious, a little more high-end than your typical cardboard boxes. And yet it also looks a little bit cheap at the same time because you have this plasticky feeling to it. So it doesn't feel really luxurious. It's almost like a cheap version of something that's trying to be nice, I guess. Some people I'm sure appreciate this box, this presentation style more than I do. I don't love it. And then we have the bottle. So on the front, you have this metallic plaque. You have the name of the fragrance right there on the front along with the house. The cap does click into place. And up top, you have the Al Haramein name since 1970. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing on the back of the bottle, nothing on the bottom of the bottle. That's it. And let's blast a couple sprays out here. There we go. Ooh. And I dropped the cap. Okay. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a clone of Green Irish Tweed by Creed, one of my favorite fragrances, especially for springtime. Came out in 1985 and it still stands to this day. Doesn't end up smelling dated, at least in my opinion, very green, fresh, gentlemanly. It doesn't really make sense that this is a Green Irish Tweed clone when you look at the name. If you know nothing about this and you just see the name Amber Oud Carbon Edition, none of that to me or to you, I'm sure, says or screams Green Irish Tweed. When you think about a fragrance that has lemon verbena and mint and iris, violet, sandalwood and ambergris, yeah, Amber Oud just doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense but you can kind of explain it away because Amber Oud is actually a line of fragrances that Haramain has. So Amber Oud is the line and then it has different additions, basically. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either, but these niche houses kind of play by their own rules, which actually don't exist. They have no rules. You could also kind of think of the Amber Oud line as their higher end line of fragrances to an extent because they're a little bit more costly than most of their other releases. And that's also reflected in the size of the bottle, which is a two fluid ounce, 60 milliliter size bottle. And that's the only size it comes in. So with all that out of the way, Amber Oud, this isn't in terms of the note breakdown, in terms of how it smells, but Amber Oud is the name of the line, so yeah. All right, finally, let's crack into the fragrance. When you first spray this on, it's got kind of a metallic feel to it. It's a bit aggressive, I'd say, in that opening salvo the first 15 minutes or so. It doesn't smell the nicest in the world up close. You can tell right away that it is a Green Irish Tweed clone. There's no way around that. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no question about it. That's what it is. So it's not really a fragrance where there's a lot up for interpretation, I'm trying to say. It's not one of those fragrances where you would say, oh, it's like a big twist of this fragrance melding with that fragrance. Nah, they're going for Green Irish Tweed. That's what they're going for. So in the opening, it's green, sharp, metallic, but fresh. The official top notes are bergamot, lavender, and rosemary and actually when you look at the note breakdown of this side by side with green irish tweed there's a lot that they don't have in common but the overall feeling of the fragrance is the same so in the opening it's not fantastic the quality is better than i'd say most other inexpensive alternatives to green irish tweed though this one isn't super inexpensive it's around the 60 dollar mark but in the air actually even in the opening it smells really good this is one of those fragrances that is much 
much nicer when you pick up whiffs of it or other people pick up whiffs of it. Right up close, in the opening, iffy. In the air, really, really good. After about 15 minutes, it mellows out, and then even up close, it smells a lot better. And that's where this starts to shine. That's where this starts to be able to compete with any of the other alternatives out there for Green Irish Tweed and actually be better than them. In the mid, the official notes, geranium, sage, and marine notes. And I'd say you could pick up maybe a little bit of a, a slight salty marine accord in there. Yeah, you could kind of picture that when you smell the fragrance. It maintains that green feeling, that freshness from the opening into the mid. Once you hit the dry down, a little bit more of a woody feeling starts to come out. You get some sandalwood, some vetiver. Overall, that green, fresh feeling from the opening carries over to the mid. As I said, kind of smooths out, that sharpness fades away, that metallic feeling kind of steps back as well, becomes so much more pleasant up close and in the air. Really good alternative at that point to Green Irish Tweed, very much captures what Green Irish Tweed is trying to do. And then into the base, you get some cedar, some vetiver, giving you this nice woodiness and a little hint of oak moss. Officially, amber is in the base. So technically, amber from amber oud is, is there, but not a whole lot of it at all, really. So the main inexpensive alternatives to Green Irish Tweed are going to be our moth Trainui, Davidoff Cool Water, and maybe you could say Aspen by Cody. I'd say if you're wanting to just go straight up on a budget, cool water or train is still the best way to go because as I said, this is gonna run you about 60, maybe $65. And to an extent, the carbon edition name here makes sense because it does have sort of a metallic carbony feel to it, especially in the opening. If you wanna go for the strongest alternative, the longest lasting alternative to Green Irish Tweed, as a clone, then this is gonna be the way to go. Because in terms of performance, Carbon Edition, much stronger than Trainui. It's gonna last a lot longer, it's gonna project further, it's gonna do more with less. So performance overall here, gonna be above average. Longevity, seven to eight hours or so off my skin, and then projection, strong for the first hour to hour and a half or so. And in terms of seasons when you would wear the fragrance, just like Green Irish Tweed. Mainly gonna be for spring, also fall, you know, more neutral weather. I'd say you could wear it in summer, but frankly, I would rather go with Trey Nui or actual Green Irish Tweed or even cool water over this one in summertime. I think the sharpness and the opening here and the additional strength of the fragrance actually works against it a little bit if we're talking high heat situations because I don't want it to start choking me out, giving me a headache or having other people think that it's just too strong. So in those situations, I'd go with one of the other alternatives or the real thing that has that performance reined in a little bit, balanced out a little more. So yeah, the real reason I bought this is just because I wanted to see, is it as good as Green Irish Tweed? Is it something that, you know, replaces Green Irish Tweed that does it better potentially? I know it sounds like sacrilege, but some of these clones that have been coming out for the price points are basically right there with the real deal. Like the gap between the price is way bigger than the gap between the quality. That's what I'm trying to say. So I wanted to see is the same deal happening here? You know, do the clones have it where owning the real thing is almost redundant? Now, of course, this is just my personal opinion. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I think Green Irish Tweed still stands above this one. I think the smoothness of Green Irish Tweed is better. I think the, the composition is better. The quality obviously is better. When you smell them side by side, you know which is which. But I'm a big Green Irish Tweed fan, kind of a fanboy. I've loved it for a long time. And I'd say, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I'm still gonna be wearing it. But in terms of high quality Green Irish Tweed alternatives that last longer than the real thing, this is gonna be one of your best bets out there. Does it replace Green Hour Sweep for me? Nah, sure doesn't. Would I rather wear this than Trey Nui or Cool Water or any of the other alternatives that I have? I'd say yes, as long as it's not high heat in summer. So there we go, Amber Oud Carbon Edition. If you've smelled it, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, thank you guys for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.